Chad, I really think you need to slow down on your drinking. <laughs> Damn, man. I'll tell you when I had enough. What was this one weekend? It's a hell of a weekend, though, man. It's worth every bit of it. So you're, you're separating right now mill cartons from glass and and uh, and also from aluminum. Yep, we're separating. Uh, it's supposed to separate the uh, CRV here, the bottles from the cans right here. Make sure they're not mixed together, and do that for all the colors: the green, the uh, clear, the brown. Then we got the plastic and cans, the cloudy plastic. Then we have the clear plastic, like the water bottles, and we'll take that and we'll separate all that stuff. We got a little garbage thrown in there, and uh, we'll go weigh it at the end after we're all finished up here. So, what what generates the most income for you? The, the aluminum or what? Aluminum is probably the best pay. Um, that's why we're hoping to get in with like the colleges, uh, fraternities, sororities, things like that when they're throwing the parties. So instead of them just throwing their money away. You know, like that garbage could be used to pay for uh, groceries in an orphanage in Tijuana or help somebody get off the streets. Uh, it definitely is a use though. Now, the, the, the plastic, they don't generate that much of a return, right? It's a little bit, it's not a ton. Like, um, generally a couple of these packed to the brim will get us a couple bucks. Okay. Like five to ten dollars, I'd say. And they don't take all types of plastic, right? They don't, they don't pay you for it every type of plastic like washing uh, detergent the bottles you may not get paid for that you're exactly right yeah they don't pay for that stuff they won't pay you know the plastic bags uh, and that's not to say they don't have a use and that we're not able to recycle those it's just you don't get paid yeah um, cardboard is difficult too there's a few of them cardboard doesn't pay as well uh, usually this truck is completely full sometimes with cardboard and I uh, will have to make a couple separate trucks to get another truck pretty soon here. And uh, that's gonna be the purpose of the business line as well. Because when we have this truck, if we go out to say a Starbucks, we, we're doing all the Starbucks downtown for the recycling. Uh, we've got a lot of hotels, a lot of clubs and restaurants right now. So we'll go pick it up, it, you know, you get your shift in, or you get your shift in there on a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday for the weekend rush. Our truck will be full of just cardboard before we get a chance to pick up the boxes, or the bottles, or the boxes. Or now, who, who owns this truck? Uh, this is Vince Larson. He's the co-president of Camper Hope and America. And uh, he's been nice enough to donate these trucks to the charity until we're up and able to get a big U-Haul or a dump truck. We uh, rig it up there with the wooden. You can see it, so it's more for commercial use now. We rig that up and that's about $100 worth of wood and mineral materials. Well, it's worked real well. Yeah, good job. Okay. We're a lot of money so far. Okay. Driven USA with uh, Sin and Jade. Um, they work for Gem. It's a gas light or gas lamp district um, advertising and marketing. And uh, they started a charity a while back called Driven USA, and that's to actually battle against like um, 
people who are driving drunk and to educate the public on what to do, and besides also coordinating services to be nice for people who are driving drunk, and so they can you know either crash at a hotel for a discounted price, uh, receive discounts on taxi fare. Also, we're looking to get down the future once this is sustainable to get a vehicle for them so we can provide free rides. And I don't know. If uh, once we have the insurance taken care of and all that, which would be the as well, uh, that would be used to also employ more people. So we're going to be able to employ drivers for the drunk driving who are doing community service. Uh, there's people through the rescue mission we're working with as well, or who are looking to get into our labor to recovery program. But yeah, so we're working with uh, Driven USA. They're looking to set up some collaborations as well with me. Do some education forums going. Uh, Mr. Walter Davis, who is filming this right now, has also volunteered his services uh, beyond uh, recognition that words could do. But one of the things is for uh, possibly going and teaching educational forums to uh, people through the programs in the schools, in the communities, in the juvenile centers, places where it's needed and where it could actually reach the youth and make a difference real quickly. Um, so that is definitely, there's a lot going on with this right here, and there's a lot of jobs that can be provided. So one of, one of the things that this really illustrates is the amount of, well, just a small example, is the amount of alcohol. What, where did most of these bottles come from? Oh, we get them a lot from uh, hotels, uh, restaurants, nightclubs, bars. Um, there's been several people who have been very kind to donate their stuff to us. Um, Keating Hotel. Uh, before there, Effins Pub, uh, Sophia Hotel and Restaurant, all kinds of just really great places. Um, the Starbucks, we've got all the Starbucks recycling for downtown locked up. Um, the uh, Las Hadas downtown, uh, Zanzibar, Cafe Lulu's, um, Java Jones. Well, there's tons of places, and I apologize if I forgot anybody on the list. So, how many truckloads do you usually collect in a day here? Well, we have the customer base collect about eight truckloads. Or, excuse me. We have the customer base collect about three truckloads per day. But, um, because of the labor we're spending, the time it takes to over here, we're unable to really get three truckloads a day. So, if we're operating at maximum efficiency, we can separate, pick up one truckload. Which will bring up the revenue. You'll see the receipt. This truck is about half full today. Uh, but generally, a truck full will give us about $50 worth on average. Um, eight truckloads is estimated to bring in uh, $400 a day. We feel miserably and we're only able to bring three equivalent truckloads in per day once we get the business loan of the U Haul or dump truck to operate as our main com company vehicle. We're looking to save very most pessimistic bare minimum estimate. We bring in uh, three truckloads a day. That's $150 a day. We do it seven days a week. Seven times three, that's five. Uh, so, uh, we're looking at $1,035 for that. Uh, that would be per week if we're doing it on a seven day week. A little less than that on a five day week. So we're going to be bringing in uh, over a gross like $3,000 easily. Uh, per month at the very bare estimated um, and, and at the same time, this would be something that's environmentally responsible. Yeah, definitely. One of the, one of the reasons that the business is so, showing so much success right now, California uh, passed the proposition a while back called AB 939, and that was to mandate that the cities are having 50% of the recyclables uh, actually go towards the proper facilities where they're going to use. We're, uh, right now, like in San Diego, they had estimated that two thirds of the recycled material goes to the uh, Miramar landfill, and we're plugging it up. I mean, quicker, as quick as I can speak, it's filling up. And by 2000, I believe it was 11, it was planned to be filled up. Otherwise, don't quote me on that exact date, but I know it was 2011, 2012. And so, if we're uh, right now, two thirds of San Diego is wasting, throwing the recyclables into the waste polluting our environment, taking away our land that can be used for growing food, other natural resources to sustain it. Uh, 
not make us reliant upon the petroleum oil, other, uh, you know, natural resources. And find more renewable ways to provide not only jobs for people, but also to provide a sustainable living for people. So are you providing any jobs? Or any, does anyone get any pay or is anyone benefiting from this program already? Well, right now, actually, uh, Brad will be working um, a little bit. It's not very much we can do right now because we're just starting off. Um, he's getting a few bucks a day right now to get by. It ain't much at all right now, and I feel bad that we're only able to offer him that much. Um, once this thing gets going and running, we're bringing in over $3,000 a day or even you know, $3,000 a month minimum. We're going to be able to afford to employ other people. Our Vice President, Ty Salata, is going to be able to subsidize part of his salary with, um, over the hospital. He's going to be able to subsidize part of his salary uh, by working here on the pickups, drop-offs, deliveries, things like that. Um, Brad right here would hopefully be able to get a job as well. Um, Right now, right now, it's very difficult to find any place to work. Uh, California is 12% unemployment rate. Uh, the banks are closing the lending. The small businesses are being squished up there because a lot of it revolves around a consumer base. There's no money coming in. And we're hoping that we'll be able to hire a lot more people and also provide the people who are volunteering their services for us with an uh, opportunity for an hourly or annual laid wage. Um, in the future here. Tell, tell me again your organization and your website. It's called chanceforhope.org. That's the parent company. The website is www.chanceforhope.org. Uh, the subsidiary that we're doing the recycling program through, uh, the fictitious business name, is called AWARE. That's an acronym, A-W-A-R-E. And the website, you can go check out that, the outlines and highlights, everything we're doing here is www.awarerecycling.org. Go check that out, you'll be able to see our customer base, be able to see our plans for expansion, and um, other organizations that we're working with to help out right now. That's one of the nice things about our program too, besides providing jobs for people, we're also creating a sustainable way for profit for business. And not to be like, uh, a little over optimistic, but I really believe that this is a, something that's going to revolutionize the way nonprofits operate. Uh, we're going to be able to provide a sustainable income for charities to, you know, plan their daily operations. So we're not having to spend so much time and resources out there fundraising, grassroots campaigns, canvassing, things like that. We're able to focus our resources and our energy more on helping the community and what we want to do, versus please give me money, please give me money, like. It, you know, we can do it, it works. A lot of organizations are very prosperous and they do a lot of good things still with all that considered. And we want to help those as well. Um, we're also helping existing nonprofit organizations right now, Invisible Children, uh, Rescue Mission we're working with. We're looking to uh, also fund Make a Wish Foundation, the Chance for Hope, obviously. Um, there's a Tijuana orphanage that we're working with, a uh, battered women's shelter in Tijuana as well, which is actually where the idea for the recycling program came from. Our co-president, Vince, uh, our co-president, Vince Larson, he was setting up this, uh, basically like, mission almost, I don't know be the best way to describe it, a philanthropic uh, mission to Tijuana. And what he was able to do was, he was using his church, um, Anchor Gas Lamp, who he's a pastor for, uh, a co-pastor with uh, Carlton. He had gone one day, he had the parish bring in their recycled goods. They, he went and exchanged it, loaded it up in the truck, load, and exchanged it for um, some money to help buy some groceries for the orphanage. One truck full over here provided groceries for an entire week for an entire vill excuse me, village, uh, someday. One truckload here past the present day provided enough money to buy groceries for the entire orphanage in Tijuana as well as that battered woman's shelter in Tijuana. The orphanage has about 12 kids uh, living in there right now. It's run by two uh, people, two as a family, a father and a husband, or excuse me, father, a father and a wife, a husband and a wife. There we go. Around by a husband and a wife taking care of about 12 kids right now. Uh, the Battered Women's Shelter has, the last count, about 10 people. Not to mention kids, that was just 10 
So it, this stuff can do a lot of good. Like the old uh, saying goes, you know, one person's trash is another person's treasure. And all we're saying is let your trash be someone else's treasure. Well, it certainly makes a lot of sense. And uh, I want to be here to help as much as I can uh, support you in, in this effort. Um, and I, I don't think you are being overly optimistic when you say that this could employ a lot of people and be very responsible. So this is a great idea, and you guys are, are real heroes out here. Uh, thank you, I appreciate it. It's the people that are donating the stuff, though, and the people who are willing to work and sacrifice their time, like Brad and Vince and Tyson. Like, they're all like out there doing, I mean, they're giving their labor because this is something they believe in. Right now, nobody's collecting money, uh, or very little, you know what I mean? Uh, beyond, like, the ability to meet their needs in terms of helping people. Um, thank you. It's nice to see other people get involved and throw their support so wholeheartedly into this. Outstanding. Uh, anything else you want to convey during this phase? I know that we're going to try to take a tour and, and, and watch you collect things uh, at the various places where people are donating. Uh, but is there something else you want to share with the public? Um, I'd like, uh, no, just nothing right now. Just to realize and think outside the box, I would say. Just uh, don't fall in the trap of seeing the media showing that there's only 12% available employment right now and think that we have to wait for somebody else to come around and think of a solution. Uh, if I was going to convey anything at all, it would be that of community and that of collaboration and that of honest hard work. We don't need people to give us these checks to get something for free. We go out there, we work, we earn it, and then we make a difference in our community by doing so. The idea that we gotta wait, the idea that we gotta wait for this new government bailout plan to come, in my opinion, is absurd, and I think it's a waste of our natural potential of human beings and the resources that we have available right here. So I think once we we'll start using this, we'll start seeing a change in our community, and we won't have to worry about even subsidizing orphanages and these bare women shelters because they'll be non-existent. Personally, the goal with this charity is to become uh, non-existent, to put ourselves out of business so we don't have to be out here doing this. We can be working towards an even greater good once the community is united. Um, that's my personal goal and I know uh, it's open to the organization and it's told about this as well. Uh, Mr. Vince Larson, our co-president, Tyson, Lata as well, Brad, yourself, Walter and that's the alleviation of poverty, or the concept of poverty. So, that would be my final closing uh, statement for what we got going right here. Well, that's great. Uh, this is Walter Davis with the Citizens Internet Television Network. Thank you.